While a recent boom in the Norwalk real estate market was great for sellers, it was downright ruthless for buyers. The good news for buyers is that over the past few months, things have normalized a bit, but I wouldn't say they've gotten easy. To give you a better perspective, why don't we look at how things were before the recent market boom so you can make the best decision on whether to buy or sell. And for buyers who hang out until the end of the video, I have a really great loan program that's going to save you a ton of money. If you're new to the channel, my name's Charlie Vinci and I'm a local realtor. All of these graphs I'm going to show you are updated on the first of the month on my website and you can get the most up-to-date information by going to the link on the screen or scanning this QR code with your phone's camera. While you're there, you can create a custom market report to get updated on the exact segment of the market that's most important to you. Let's see what's happening in the Norwalk market. The median number of days on the market was 35 in September of 2022. In September of previous years, it was 37 in 2021, 50 in 2020, 71 in 2019, 39 in 2018, and 50 in 2017. Obviously, properties are selling much quicker prior to the COVID market, and you should expect the best single family properties, those that are competitively priced and cosmetically appealing, to sell in the first few weeks. We're finding that buyers still need to move quickly to get the best homes. The months of supply graph is essentially a ratio of buyers and sellers. If the graph is trending down, things are getting better for sellers. If it's trending up, things are getting better for buyers. As you can see, supply is still constrained and it's still a seller's market. We would consider the market to be balanced where neither the buyer nor the seller had an advantage when we were at six months of supply. In September of 2022, we had two months of supply. In September of previous years, we had 2.4 in 2021, 4.6 in 2020, 6.5 in 2019, 5.9 in 2018, and 5.2 in 2017. Notice that supply usually falls towards the end of the year only to rebound again in the spring. Be aware that this graph is looking at the Norwalk market as a whole, and some price brackets will be hotter and others cooler. In general, if you're shopping near the median price or below it, the market is typically more brisk. So let's take a look at the median price graph for Norwalk. As you can see, we hit 525,000 in September of 2022. In September of previous years, we hit 463,000 in 2021, 456,000 in 2020, 370,000 in 2019, 417,500 in 2018, and 427,500 in 2017. Also, if you're wondering why the numbers are even, it's because these are median prices, not average. I prefer using median numbers because averages can be skewed by large sales. If you'd like, you can explore the average prices on my site by going to the link on the screen or scanning the QR code at the end of the video. Let's see what percentage of their list price sellers received in Norwalk. In September of 2022, the median seller received 100% of their list price. In September of previous years, sellers received 100% in 2021, 99 in 2020, 97.1 in 2019, 98% in 2018, and 97.4% in 2017. In practice, homes that are competitively priced and cosmetically appealing will go over asking, while less desirable or overpriced homes will sell for under asking. Next, let's take a look at closed sales in Norwalk. While we had 113 in September of this year, in September of previous years, we had 137 in 2021, 134 in 2020, 77 in 2019, 80 in 2018, and 74 in 2017. I know some buyers have been frustrated by low inventory, but as you can see, we're selling more homes now than we did pre-COVID, it's just that the homes are selling faster. To get a great home, you'd have to be able to move quickly and with confidence. For our clients, we'll do a market analysis to help them avoid overpaying. Looking at the number of homes for sale in Norwalk, in September of 2022, we had 198. Back in September of previous years, we had 295 in 2021, 444 in 2020, 540 in 2019, 495 in 2018, and 488 in 2017. Notice how the number of homes for sale typically falls after September, only to rebound again in the spring. All right, now let's take a look at pending sales in Norwalk. You'll see that we had 97 in September of 2022. In September of previous years, we had 133 in 2021, 149 in 2020, 79 in 2019, 71 in 2018, and 78 in 2017. 
To help you make a good decision on whether to buy or sell, I'm gonna show you a historical trend that you may wanna take into account. This graph shows the median sales price for the entire county. I'm using the whole county because a lot of data will help you see the historical trend. I'm sure you noticed the fairly consistent peaks and valleys. Historically, home prices almost always peak in June. Conversely, home prices are at their lowest in February. Keep in mind that the offer was typically accepted about two months before the closing month that shows on the graph. If you'd like to get a good deal on a home this year, your best chance is to get your offer accepted in or around December. From personal experience, late November and early January can also be good times. The biggest challenge buyers are facing in the coming months is rising interest rates. Forbes and many others are predicting that rates may get as high as 8% by year's end. Every 1% increase increases your mortgage payment by 10%. But I promised you good news. If you can keep your loan amount below 1.5 million, Newtown Savings Bank is offering a rate in the upper fours with no points. Yes, upper fours. Outside of this deal, the best rates I could find with no points were in the upper fives or a full 1% higher. Newtown Savings is one of our local banks and I was told that they can't do this forever, so you might just wanna reach out to them and see if it's right for you. Also, if you're concerned about falling prices, I have an article for you. I'll leave you with a link below the video. In summary, the New York Post just released a list of the US housing markets that are most stable and all three major metro areas in Connecticut, including ours, made the list. If you're thinking about buying or selling and don't currently have an agent, don't hesitate to call me. I'd be happy to talk with you about your sale or purchase. Wait, I have one more option for you. If you're on your computer or watching on TV, whip out your phone and scan this QR code. It will bring you right to the page on our site related to the video.